Hey guys, welcome back. So we're continuing with more in Mortal Thor, where now both Loki and Thor are revisiting an old story where Loki's mouth got the two of them into more trouble than they could handle because this is the only way they can truly learn more about who they're up against. So with that said, let's get into it. But first, if you're enjoying these videos, be sure to drop a like, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and don't forget to hit that bell up top to get all notifications so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. All right, so coming back, we continue with Thor and Loki, who are currently reliving an old memory by way of a story being told so that Thor can recall everything he knows about Utgard in hopes of this helping him find the answer to the question of why his mother Gia has been working with the Elder Gods. So to see this through, Loki's prepared a magic fire so that he could tell the story of when him and Thor first stumbled across this strange land. And like we saw before, this story is pretty much a retelling of Thor Volume 1, Issue 272, where with the famished Thor and Loki coming here, they stumbled across the giant named Skymir who offered them food from his traveling bag, which at the time seemed impossible for Thor to open. So of course, a frustrated Thor went to smack Skymir off of the belief that he was being mocked, only for his thunderous blow to barely tickle the giant. But after Skymir woke up, he invited both Thor and Loki to make their way and follow him to Utgard Hall, which is where we continue with the story now. And much like the original telling with the two of these guys following Skymir and losing track of him, after a while of heading forward in that same direction, they eventually make their way to Utgard Hall. So they make their way up the Utgard steps all the way to the Utgard doors, but even with Loki using his eyes of magic, he still sees no sign of Skymir. So at first, Loki's just like, you know what, this probably be a good time to turn around. But after saying this, Thor just smacks him on the head while telling Loki that all cowardice is wisdom to the coward. Yet true wisdom comes with knowledge, and the true son of Odin would know what vast chambers lie beyond such vast doors. Cause the way Thor sees it, to get true wisdom, as well as the respect from his father Odin, they gotta show a little bravery, and those things are gonna come at the cost of pain and sacrifice. But to Loki, all he really hears is Thor's pride speaking. So he more or less tells Thor, all right, well let's get to sacrificing, starting with that pride. And you can start by getting on your belly which Thor really doesn't understand at first, but of course this is Loki telling him that in order for them to get inside, they gotta get on all fours and crawl under this door. So the two of them do and it lands for a funny moment because Thor's butt gets stuck under the door. So Loki tells him if he didn't skip leg day so much, then his butt wouldn't be so flabby. So Thor then tells him this is Asgard's behind, which for some reason to me just feels like an uh, America's ass joke, <laughs> but who knows. And just after making their way inside, they're greeted by Utgard Loki, who first tells them that they would not know his true name until the hour of his death, which very much feels like some foreshadowing going on here. But next he goes on to tell Thor and Loki that upon entering the grounds of Utgard, they must partake in a series of trials. And he goes on to let them choose what their trials will be. So Loki decides that they'll do an eating contest, which on one hand you can say that, hey, that's pretty clever since the two of them were already looking for something to eat. But when Utgard Loki tells them that they are participating as representatives of their realm, which for Thor and Loki, this includes Asgard, Jotunheim and Midgard, which at first has Thor a little confused because at this point he hasn't spent much time in Midgard. And that just falls in line with how long ago this story took place. Because even though this story is a retelling of what we saw in Thor Volume 1, Issue 272, even back at that time, this was also a story being told about events that had taken place years ago, which would actually take us further back into the journey into mystery days. So yeah, technically in 2024, Loki is retelling a story that Thor told back in 1978. So again, for these two, the time of which this all actually happened, it's dating back hundreds upon hundreds of years ago. But after Loki selects the all you can eat challenge, it's accepted. And after they hear that it's a serious deal and worlds lie in the balance, Loki's then like, well, we need to add a drinking contest to it too. Because I mean, Thor, you drink a lot of mead, which right there just has Thor smacking the mess out of Loki. Because he keeps selecting these wild challenges and they're all getting accepted. And it just has Thor like Loki, you don't know when to shut up. So going forward, Utgard Loki assigns to each of them their individual challenges, with Loki doing the eating contest and Thor doing the drinking contest. And Loki doesn't waste any time to start eating, because again, like we saw, these guys came here hungry. And not long after Loki starts eating, he's presented with his challenger, Laji, who's just this real skinny, unassuming looking guy. And it has Thor like, okay, great. At least he's not a giant like what we thought. But things quickly start to go left here. 
because as Thor is drinking his mead, he immediately spits it back out because it is extremely bitter. So right there, Utgard Loki's like, well, what did you expect? Mother's milk? And right there, it's like, come on, man, chill out. And what's messed up is that as Guardian Loki, or Jotunheim Loki, depend on who you're asking, he teases Thor because the drinks at his table are actually good. But then out of nowhere, the whole table lifts up as Lodgy consumes this entire feast and the table right along with it, which I gotta say, this is a very exaggerated version of how the original story went because back then we were told that Lodgy stuffed his face with all the food including the plates, which make no mistake that's still extreme but this time around Buddy took the whole table with it and in Thor's case he's not even able to keep his drink down because for him he has to outdo what Utgard Loki said he already did which was drain this cup in three long swallows and Thor's not even able to get close to that. But while this is going on, we take a step back where we see Dario Agar alongside of Enchantress and Scourge, with Dario Agar reading through Thor issue 272, though the events are playing out the way that we're seeing them now in Immortal Thor. And just as a reminder, like we saw earlier in the series, Dario Agar had recently acquired Thor's publishing and he plans to put his own twist on Thor's story, along with the help of Enchantress. Scourge on the other hand, he was sent here back from the dead by Odin, who is aware even in the afterlife that Thor is in danger, so he sent Scourge back to the land of the living to give Thor a helping hand. But in the bigger picture, we still don't really know what Enchantress is getting out of this. Not yet though I imagine we'll find out soon. But right here, she just pats Dario on the head and tells him to get back to reading, which in a strange way, back over with Thor and Loki, who are at the magic campfire. This has Loki like, wait a minute, did you hear something? Which right here is like your first sign of the magic of both Loki and Enchantress brushing shoulders. But nonetheless, Thor and Loki get back to the story because for the next challenge, Loki's gotta win a race. And right here, you can't tell me this kid that he's about to race is not Wally West. Because even when Loki equips himself with the seven league boots, which are these magical boots that allow someone to travel seven leagues or 21 miles in a single step. But even with Loki wearing these boots, this kid, Lucky, he just completely smokes Loki, causing him to lose the race before he could even twitch. But recalling this specific moment, it raises suspicion within Loki because he doesn't remember Lucky being the opponent he had to race because originally it was Huji, which according to the original story, it was Huji. So it's right here where Loki says, magic can turn back on the caster and tails upon the teller, especially if another draws power from the same fire. But we must see this myth to its end, which again, this is Loki realizing that they're not the only ones revisiting this story. And going back, we see Thor facing his next challenge, where now Thor just needs to break the grip of Utgard Loki's ancient nurse, Eli. But Thor's not able to, and he's not even willing to yield. So eventually Utgard Loki, he calls it off, and he says that's enough, because Thor won't be able to yield if he's dead. So after that, for Thor's next challenge, he's told to simply lift this cat. But of course, there was nothing simple about it. And eventually when Thor got one of the cat's paws off the ground, the illusion started to fade away, which from here revealed the truth that Skymir the giant was Utgard Loki from the beginning. The knot that Thor couldn't remove from the bag, that was the threat of eternity's own fate, which shouldn't be movable by anyone. And even when Thor brought down Yonborn on Skymir's head, it took no effect because Utgard Loki placed a mountain in the way. For Lodgy's role, this was fire itself, all consuming, all devouring, while the mischievous Lucky was Loki's own thought that raced ahead of his every action, so there was no way he could beat him. And the horn that Thor drank from was the sea left at low tide by his efforts, while the ancient nurse was death herself, to whom even the gods must bow. And finally, the cat that Thor couldn't lift, that was Jormungandr, the Midgard serpent that encircles the earth, who was once the foretold end to the story of Thor. And even now, Thor, he doesn't yield, and Utgard Loki sees this, so he tells him, it seems thy godly race is worthy to rule the cosmos, son of thy mother, at least for the present age. Yet beware, in a future age, the will may turn, and should the gate to Utgard be unlatched again, all will fall to catastrophe. And now that we understand each other, Asa Thor, let the final remaining magic be dispelled, the enchantment that is Utgard itself. To where from there, Utgard melted away into smoke, and sometime later, Thor and Loki found themselves back in Asgard. And that was the end. Which for a moment in the present, this has Thor like, what, well that's it? So Loki tells him, it's how every tale must end. I am only the teller, I cannot find meaning in the tale for you, nor would I if I could. Which right there just goes back to what Loki mentioned before, about not coddling Thor with the story itself. So for a moment here, Thor goes over what they know, because Tornos is to him what Utgard Loki is to Loki. 
and so far those are the only two that they've met because even in this memory, Skymere just turned out to be Utgard Loki who was leading them into his trick the whole time. But to figure out the answer to his question as far as why his mother would send Tornos or even be working with the Elder Gods in the first place, this has Thor wanted to ask another question and it's a question that he fears the answer to. Because if there's a Nootgard Thor and the Nootgard Loki, then that must mean that somewhere in that forest, beyond that gate, there's a good chance that there could also be an Utgard Odin. But Thor's not quite sure if he's ready for that just yet. I mean, I got a feeling he's not going to have much of a choice for long. And so now real quick, I want to give a special shout out to all the patrons. Thank you guys for all of your support. And for anyone who's new here who wants more information on how to support the channel, I got a link below where you can go to patreon.com slash dope spill. But that'll do it for this one, guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, and we'll do it again on the next one. All right, later.